Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to this From the Depths basic airship tutorial. Now airships are absolutely something that you should have a go at building from the depths because they are super fun and also super effective craft once you get the hang of them. And so we're just going to be in this video going through five broad categories of airship that you can make. Um, so just a quick rundown of what they are. Uh, you have the balloon airship, which you're looking at right now, lucky you, uh, that uses balloons to get up into the air. You have the helium pump airship, which uses helium pumps to get up in the air. And you have the, I guess, the flying ship, uh, the standard thruster slash um, jet, ion jet or steam jet uh, airship that uses those things to get up in the air. You have the daddy blade uh, flying airship, which just has internal uh, daddy blades to get up into the air or sky I keep saying air and then you have the custom jet airship uh, which is probably one of the best ones uh, I'll say you will tend to find a lot of advanced or more powerful and more heavy airships use that so um, before we get into that we have first have to define what an airship is and that's a little bit difficult in from the depths uh, because from the depths generally doesn't uh, mesh well with real-world uh, definitions for things. Uh, good luck uh, getting a bunch of um, depthians, yep, that's what you call from the depths players, um, to agree on what constitutes a battleship and what constitutes a cruiser, for instance. You'll, they'll be debating about it all day, because uh, the, uh, the size of things in this game is a little weird. So, airships. My definition, which you don't have to use if you don't want to, is basically a flying thing that requires upward thrust uh, rather than wings or pitch or pitch control in order to control its altitude. So a plane is something that uh, uses wings or uses pitch control in order to control its altitude. And I'll just spawn in a plane uh, just while we're here just to give you an idea of what that means. So here is our friend the damselfly. And so you'll notice that this guy uh, doesn't actually have wing blocks at all, so it might not actually count as a plane, but it's using a pitch in order to uh, control its altitude. And it doesn't have any thrusters uh, pointing down or up um, in order to control its altitude at all, so that's why this is a plane. Uh, this fella over here uh, is not using pitch to uh, go up, and it's not using wing blocks either. It's got a balloon, a very big one. And that's it. So yeah, and the definition for thruster craft, in case anyone was wondering, is a craft that relies on thrusters to control uh, altitude, pitch, or roll, or any combination of those things. So again, uh, this thing technically isn't a thruster craft because it's not controlling pitch or roll uh, with thrusters, and it's not using, it is technically using thrust to control its altitude, but that's because it's pitching up, so that's not a thruster craft. Uh, neither is this really. Well, it technically is, because these data blades control um, where it is in space and time, but also not really. So it's a bit of a fuzzy definition, so don't worry too much about it. Uh, make a flying thing, and if it works, uh, congratulations, because um, that's an accomplishment. And don't worry too much about whether it's an airship or thruster craft, because those are just words. And um, so key things with airships in particular. Uh, number one is redundancy, which this thing doesn't have because it's made purely for demonstration purposes. Uh, so the thing should be able to fly uh, with many or most of its thrusters destroyed or disabled. So that goes for the things controlling its altitude, its pitch, and its roll. Um, this thing kind of has redundancy because it's got two uh, Deadly Blades which control pitch. They're not actually doing anything right now because it's very stable. And... Um, two uh, Deadly Blades controlling roll, and it's got two different Deadly Blades that control its uh, yaw, by the way. So yeah, that's a bit of a redundancy there. It only has the one balloon though, so if the balloon gets popped, it's in trouble. And um, another thing is that, and this is something that you're going to see later in the video, is that if you want to make a properly evasive and survivable airship, uh, you have to move uh, constantly in both the vertical and horizontal planes, and that is a fancy way of saying, make it bouncy. Make it you know, make it groove up and down uh, so that uh, it messes with the uh, enemy AI that's aiming at it. So that, yeah, that's a super handy tip for airships of all kinds. So, 
with that out of the way, we can get to the airships themselves. And so first off, we have airships that are in the air because they have a balloon or two on them. So that is literally the only thing that's keeping this fella up in the air at a nice altitude of about 300 meters. Is this solitary balloon. So the reason you'd use a balloon rather than anything else is because, for one, they're cheap. Um, 60 uh, materials for a balloon, compare that for... Uh, 100 uh, for a small jet engine and 900 for a large jet engine. These are super cheap and also uh, they don't require any power. You just you activate them or not and you can control that with advanced uh, control blocks and it's just very simple. You just put a thing um, on top of your center of mass so you see the mass, the blue thing right there, balloons right on top of that and well you're up in the air beautifully and the reason that this thing is, you will have noticed uh, the spy uh, antenna on a antenna, uh, at the spy antennae uh, on this thing is because this is not a combat craft, and the reason it's not a combat craft is why you probably don't ever want to stick uh, balloons, or at the very least, you don't want to use balloons as your main form of thrust um, on anything that gets shot at, because uh, balloons, uh, you might be surprised to hear this. They get popped really easily. So the split second that thing gets popped, uh, we're falling out of the sky and we have to wait a few seconds uh, before the balloon uh, respawns. And they do respawn at no cost, which is super duper handy. Um, but yeah, generally I would not advise making any kind of combat airship uh, that relies on these things entirely to stay up in the air. So let's have this thing move around a little bit. So. You spin me right around, baby. So this is a decent enough, um, I guess, surveillance airship because it's really damn cheap. It's just over a thousand materials. It scuttles along at roughly 20 meters per second at top speed. Uh, it's very stable. Uh, but yeah, it's not winning any prizes um, for speed or combat prowess or anything like that. It's not armed at all. And But uh, mentioning the good thing about balloons is that this thing doesn't require any power, so... This thing has no form of power generation at all because it doesn't need it. This is super useful. This thing doesn't require any materials to move. Um, which means that if you want to make, say, a very cheap and very low-cost uh, spy plane or surveillance airship like this, that's pretty good. If you want to make a logistics vehicle, that's very good. Balloons are just very good for getting them up in the air for minimal cost and no power. So, that's really handy. And speaking of really handy, let us talk about the next way to get your airships up in the air, and that is helium pumps. Helium pumps are really good. So, here's our balloon scout, here's our helium airship. Which, fun fact, uh, this is actually one of the best, uh, not the best, but one of the better bomber uh, prototypes I've ever made. Um, let's just disable that. So, yeah, what you're gonna see, by the way, you'll notice that uh, there were two PIDs uh, on that uh, airship you just saw. Uh, you're gonna see them a lot uh, in this video and in airships in general because uh, PIDs are very, very useful for airships. You don't really want to leave it up to the standard AI uh, to run your airship and keep it up in the air. Uh, because the regular AI is kind of stupid and the split second you turn off its movement, uh, that by default, turns off all thrusters, which includes uh, anything that's keeping your airship up in the air and anything uh, controlling uh, your airship's positioning, so the pitch and roll controllers, for instance. So we'll talk in a hot second with the next airship about what a good starting PID setup is, but for now, uh, look upon this block and celebrate, because this is the helium pump. So this is like uh, the air pump that's over here, that is uh, nice and cheap and is used to just pump water out of uh, watertight spaces. Uh, but helium pumps are that plus one because uh, they pump water and air out and fill it with helium. And they enable this thing, uh, which is uh, about 23,000 materials worth of mostly missiles, uh, about 560 blocks or so, um, to get it almost up to 300 meters in the air. And this thing is not particularly big, which is super handy. And what else can we talk about? So you do need, if you want to use mainly helium to get your thing in the air, This your craft does have to be very light. Uh, this thing is made entirely out of truss blocks and alloy, uh, apart from all the non-structural components. 
Uh, it doesn't even have metal around the ammo compartment, so this thing is really kind of fragile. Uh, which would be fine if it was a lot faster, but it's not. These custom jets on the side used for propulsion are very small, so it doesn't go super fast, but that's fine, uh, because it can blow up the Marauder. Uh, no problem at all. So here's our friend the Marauder, and there we go. And I just remembered I was supposed to spawn in uh, things as examples for uh, how these things work, but it's okay, we're not going to bother anymore. So yeah, the main problem with using helium uh, as the main form of thrust for your airship, main form of vertical thrust at least, is that... Uh, much like balloons, it's not very durable. It's not a super reliable way of staying up in the air. Because, fun fact, when you shoot at people, they have a rotten habit of shooting back. And balloons get popped easily. And helium uh, compartments can be made much more durable because you can layer armor around them. And even alloy, which is not the... It's not incredibly durable. Um, it's some... It's between... It's just a little bit less durable than metal. Uh, while well, costing the same, which is why most people don't like it, or so it seems. Um, but yeah, this thing is is like not going to take hits very well, and a split second, uh, this actually gets damaged, it will lose altitude. So, if we go there, and I just need to disable uh, Rambos Repair. So, this thing you'll now notice is that uh, the buoyancy has been compromised, and so we are... Um, the, basically, the flooding of regular air is going in there. So we are losing altitude very slowly. But we have extra compartments, so let's just pop those. And there's another one in the back. Let's pop those too. Excuse me, there we go. So where's our altitude? Where is our altitude? Oh yeah. We're dropping. We are dropping little by little. Thankfully, you do have a little bit of time to repair all your compartments uh, before you completely fall out of the sky, but this is one of the main reasons. Uh, again, helium pumps are not best for your main way of getting up out of the air, and you'll see, I think our main compartment just completely ran out of helium. So let's just, uh, let's just quickly do a repair there and see if our, if our pump can get us back in the air. Yep, we're gonna get back in the air, no problem. So yeah, similar thing uh, with the balloons is that uh, helium airships don't really like getting shot at. And in fact, I don't really know of any uh, examples uh, from the Nita campaign of things that rely primarily on helium to fly. If you do know any, uh, please let me know, because that'd be fun to see. But moving right along, we're gonna have a look at uh, the airships. Um, which you're probably going to see a lot more of, both in the campaign, on the workshop, etc, etc. So, for this next one, we're talking about just thrusters. I guess standard thrusters is uh, what we'll be talking about. So this covers uh, jets, ion jets, and um, I'm not really going to cover a steam jets uh, in this tutorial, but just remember they exist, because they can be used. They can work very well, in fact. So where do we want to go? We want to go ships, ships. So, you might be wondering why I'm showing you the ship. This is the Twin Head. It's one of my favorite starter craft. Uh, because, well, I don't know, I just like it. It's versatile, it's reasonably cheap. But you know what it doesn't do that it could do? It doesn't fly. And one of the beautiful things about airships is that it's a ship that's in the air. So, if you just want to, to convert a ship into an airship, uh, that's reasonably straightforward as far as From the Depths goes. You just cover it in thrusters until it gets in the air and you add enough power uh, so that it can actually do that. So you'll notice that the underside of the twin head is covered in propellers, it's got some downward facing ones uh, that are set to roll as a matter of fact. This is a little bit overkill for how small this thing is. Um, but yeah, those are roll props and it's got some uh, push props just to get it out of the water, otherwise it sits a little low. And it's got some stuff at the back, and it's got some rudders. Uh, you know, like what a ship do. Um, but that's not good enough, so as one of the examples of airships, I have converted this thing into uh, from a wet boat to an airboat. Which is not actually the same thing as an airship, so please ignore me. So let's go back here, and flying twin head. Here we go. So we've got the same ship, 
but it's a little bit different. So, you see where before there was props, now there's thrusters. We've got pitch uh, thrusters in the front and in the back, and we've got some altitude slash roll thrusters. This is very useful, by the way. You can get thrusters to pull double duty just by messing with these sliders. And the rule of thumb is, uh, when green is good and... Wait, red is bad, green is good. Whoopsie daisy. Did I seriously set this up wrong? Nope, I didn't. I'm a clever person. Right, so... Um, right, so... When you build a ship and you just bolt thrusters on it until it flies... Uh, two things. Firstly, I mentioned that uh, PIDs are your best friend. Uh, they really are. So if we go to find the PID, where is it? Where is my friend the PID? Here it is. So if you're wondering what on earth kind of PID settings uh, can just get your darn thing in the air, this is what I almost always use. So we've got three general purpose PIDs here. You can be clever and integrate um, uh, AI PIDs straight into the AI. You can use breadboards, you can use ACBs, you can use Lua if you know how to do Lua code. But for now, we're keeping things simple with these three general purpose PID controllers because they do the job very nicely. And so the standard settings I start with, and these are not perfect, but they will get your stuff just flying and moving how you like it. Uh, gain is 0.1, integral 250, derivative 0.5, and that is the same settings uh, with all of these. So uh, this little setup right here is what I use basically for whenever I want to make something and I'm not going to use anything else to make it fly. Uh, the only difference uh, thing you need to remember is that for the altitude one, uh, you enable a fake point and you set that fake point to whatever it is uh, you want it to, you want the altitude to be. So, and the input is altitude above terrain away. So let's go back here. Uh, pitch is set to pitch, set propulsion pitch. Roll is set to propulsion roll, the settings down there. And altitude is set to altitude above terrain or waves, that's important. Uh, you don't want to, well, the altitude above mean sea level uh, if you pick altitude above mean sea level or just altitude above terrain, it'll ignore either the sea or the land. And uh, for an airship, you want it to be above both land and sea, because otherwise it crashes and then that's a tremendous embarrassment for everybody. So yeah, that's basically the PID setup. It's reasonably straightforward. Once you know how, if you don't, good luck figuring that out by yourself. And also a fun thing to note is that, uh, like should mention a combination of all the things I'm listing in this video is probably the best for uh, getting your airships to behave exactly the way you want them to. So this thing is pitching down a little bit, very annoyingly. Uh, this is why the CU uh, does help to tweak the PIDs a little bit uh, once you uh, are satisfied uh, with it. Uh, it has takeoff balloons. For the very simple reason that it is a very useful thing uh, for your airships to get themselves out of the water. And this thing is going to be bouncing around a little bit. Um, just a little bit. Just so uh, until it gets nice and steady and there we go. And the third thing is that if you've just decided to convert a ship into an airship, um, custom jets are fantastic uh, for this because the twin head has enough engine power. It's got this uh, uh, rather n delightfully noobish uh, injector engine in here, the flat jimmy as I call it, and that's got just enough power for uh, the roll, uh, for the pitch roll and altitude thrusters on the bottom. I didn't have any spare uh, thrusters, well I didn't have any spare power for the um, uh, propulsion, the main propulsion, so I just stuck some uh, prefab custom jets on here. These are not very big, but the thing is going along at a reasonably fast uh, pace, 40 meters per second, uh, which is faster than the version of the water does, that's for sure. And also, completely torpedo-proof. Very useful. Okay, so that's, uh, that's thrusts. It's like simple principles in mind. Uh, thr main thrust to get it up and in the air is below the center of mass. And uh, pitch is at either end. Roll is on the sides. And that's all very lovely, so let's go over here, and we're going to spawn in the Deadly Blade airship. So now we've got uh, some proper fighty craft, and the Deadly Blade airship, I have to say, is probably the most airshipy um, out of all the things I'm going to show you. So, 
Dirty Blades are wonderful. I'm saying a bunch of different stuff in this uh, video is wonderful, uh, but Dirty Blades are fantastic because, well, that's why. I mentioned it's a good idea to make your uh, airships bouncy. Uh, this thing is very bouncy, to the point where crams, even at very short range, have a hard time hitting it, and even APS has trouble hitting it at uh, longer ranges. And it's not entirely finished. It's got a big gun on it. If you're wondering what that gun is loaded with, it's Super Cavitation uh, AP Frag. It's very nice, very handy. And uh, you can tell I haven't set the PIDs up perfectly because this thing is migrating backwards a little bit, and that's not good. It's not a problem in combat, but it uh, just looks a little bit stupid uh, when you want it to just be still so you can talk about it. So, how much Deadly Blade is this thing packing? Well, it's got a fair amount of Deadly Blade. And you notice these things are not spinning entirely in sync with each other, and that is because uh, these are responding both to um, up, so upward thrust, but also to pitch. Uh, so I mentioned, I think I mentioned earlier, that uh, you want uh, your lift, whatever it is, to be uh, on top of the center of mass. If you can't quite manage that, surrounding the center of mass is almost as good. You just need to be uh, try and get it to surround it as much as possible. So uh, this is uh, might not be the best demonstration of it, but uh, in this case the center of mass is just off-center of this big heavy turret right here. So... When building this thing, since it's a pretty standard, like, my version canoe, uh, it's thick in the middle, it's thinner at the ends, and the heavy thing is right in the middle, so I could anticipate ahead of time uh, where the center of mass was likely to be. That's not what I wanted to do. Come on. Oh, there we go. So I just surrounded uh, that uh, central part uh, in long daddy blades, and fun thing about uh, daddy blades, by the way, is that the further away the blade is from the pole, uh, the more lift it gets, so you're better off using longer deadly blades uh, rather than just um, spamming um, smaller ones. It is a little bit wacky. These are clipping straight through uh, other compartments, but that's okay. You don't see it from the outside, so I'm not too worried. And the great thing about deadly blades is that uh, deadly blades themselves are fairly cheap, 25 materials, and the blades are incredibly cheap. They're three materials each. And uh, this, you'll notice that this thing is using barely any uh, of the power I've given it. Um, fun fact, uh, with the building of this airship, I actually overestimated how much power I would need uh, for the thrust. Because this thing is mostly alloy. And, um, yeah, so it's actually got too much power. It doesn't need that much. I could get rid of most of those engines, assuming I didn't want to stick something else on here. Like lambs or decoys or something like that. So yeah, and you'll notice that it's not using Deadly Blades uh, to move. It has got Deadly Blades for pitch. It's got these stylish uh, fins or compartments. They're very thick fins. Uh, and for your... So Deadly Blades, generally, they're great for altitude control. They're great for pitch control. They're great for roll control. And they're great for steering. They're not so good for forward thrust. Uh, you're better off with... Um, uh, standard thrusters, jets, or ions, or steam, um, what do you call it, or steam jets, uh, but a better thing is custom jets. So, I'm gonna show you my custom jet thing, uh, right new. So, custom jets are probably one of the best and most reliable ways of getting your airships in the air, uh, because, well, they just have so much thrust, they have so much thrust! And, uh, again, if you think ahead of time where your center of mass is going to be, again, um, this thing actually used to have a cram turret in its prototype stage, but the cram wasn't very good, and this thing actually flies too fast uh, for crams to be useful, so I got rid of it, and so now it has a bunch of kinetic missiles instead, but you'll notice it has small custom jets here, there, and everywhere. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, it's got ten of them, and again, these things are set up uh, to control... Whoops, that's a generator. Whoops, that's the other thing. Where's control? Okay, so these things are set to respond equally to pitch and uh, thrust up. So this thing is rock steady and it's bouncy. And now's as good a time as any to show you how to get that bouncy effect with PIDs. Because uh, there's more than one way to achieve that bounce. But if you're using the PID method that I'm currently using, so you'll see exactly the same kind of pitch PID, exactly the same kind of roll. 
but the general purpose PID that uh, changes the altitude, it's also pretty much the same, except the fake point keeps changing. How does that happen? So, you have two ACBs. Um, so, you have one set to one value. In this particular case, it's set to 20, and that 20 activates every 20 seconds to set the fake point to 60. It's got a priority of 1, which means that uh, it will supersede uh, this one, uh, which sets the PRD's fake points to 40. Which means that uh, every 10 seconds this thing changes altitude between 60 meters to 40 meters. So you can just see there that it's just bouncing up and down, and then it just bounces down, and then it's going to suddenly drop right now. Which means that as it is whizzing along, and it, this thing goes really fast, because like custom jets are good for more than just uh, keeping your stuff up. They also make things go very fast, and yes, I should do a tutorial on them, but these ones that I've used right here are just modifications of uh, this standard CJE example. So if you are wondering how to you how to make a decent CJE, uh, this example is actually a pretty good way to see how it works, and just read the tooltips for everything, and you should be fine. But the main thing with the custom jet is just um, ahead of time, place them around your center of mass. And there's a very good example of that, uh, which I'm going to show right now, using a faction craft, which I should have done beforehand. Where is my friend here? Which one is the correct one? We're gonna spawn in the kobold, so... Kobold might need some retrofitting soon, but uh... So, in case you're wondering how to make a flying brick, this is, uh, it's something like this. It has big custom jets. These things have clear access straight through the vehicle, and they're set to make this huge monster of craft fly. And you'll notice they're in the middle, so, uh, in case you're wondering how to make something like this, uh, place the custom jets first, and roughly around the area uh, which you think uh, the um, center of mass is going to be, and then you build out around from there, and build uh, more than you think you might need. Redundancy is good. A lot of um, Grey Talon and Scarlet Dawn aircraft actually stay up in the air remarkably well. Like, they can stay up in the air with like more than half their upward thrust uh, destroyed. So take the lesson from that. And, like, it's better to have more than less um, custom jet when it comes to making your airships uh, zoom around the place. And speaking of zoom around the place, let us hop on this thing, fella. And let us fry a plunderer, because that's hilarious and fun. So that's basically how to build an airship. You have a variety of options at your at disposal. If you want to make them small, light, and cheap, um, balloons or helium compartments are a really straightforward way to do that. But for the other methods, uh, I would really recommend using custom jets simply because, oh my goodness, you are getting really close. What's your broadside minimum distance set to? How dare you shoot at my business? Yeah, it's amazing how effective kinetic missiles are. But yeah. Short summary of the airship, balloons and helium if you don't anticipate getting shot at, uh, standard thrusters, pure deadly blades, and custom jets when you do anticipate getting shot at. Pretty straightforward really. So, and PIDs. Always use your PIDs. Or ACPs, or breadboard, or Lua, depending on what you're feeling like. Don't worry if you didn't know what any of that meant, just use the PIDs. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon or YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters and I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.